So, yeah, the problem is, is going to the inch and a half. Yeah. It's really... Dude, what the fuck? Is somebody dying outside? I'm afraid to go out there. I'm not going out there. Richard Fall? Oh, oh, that makes more sense. Makes more sense. I told yeah, you. You gotta see this car I, I went and I'm working on. It's crazy. Okay. I ain't never seen one like it. Ever. Most of the time we just honk when we pull up, but. <laughs> this is the first year of a cutlet. I've never seen one. It's a four lug cutlet. A cutlet? It's a cutlet. It's got three on the tree, and uh, and it's just kooky, crazy, and it's cool looking. It's got some body lines. Oh my God! Could you imagine trying to rope that fender out? So what is it? It exactly. is an F85 Oldsmobile Cup, '62. Hmm. That nuts. Yeah. And uh, you got to see the dash. The dash is nuts. The back end's nuts. I mean, it's just it's just odd, bizarro. I mean, they just like, what the hell? It was like somebody at GM went on an acid trip and this is what they came up with. Oh. And look at this emblem. I have never seen this look. Look at this. Does that look like, like Transformers or, I mean, uh, what is I mean, I, I think of that same emblem is on uh, Boba Fett, Relax like Oldmobile, obviously. <laughs> same color, too, right? Mandalorian color. <laughs> yeah, and you got to see the instrument cluster. The instrument cluster. It, oh, it, wow. it was like an afterthought. Where are we going to put the instrument cluster? On the dash. <laughs> make, a, make a wicked cool car and then just throw it on top of it. <laughs> wow. And there's three on the tree. I see it. Look at all the each individual, the wiper, the lights, and everything. It's like they, they thought they wanted to put the gauges there at first. <laughs> yeah. And they said, no, we'll put it on top and throw some knobs in this stuff. <laughs> no. They couldn't see them, man. Your knees are in the way. Yeah, like, look how much money they spent. I mean, you know how much to get them seats done like that to cost? Oh, yeah. I mean, this car is, and, uh, and this, I've never seen that ever. Uh-uh, I don't even know it. Beat me up. Uh, to me, it looks like a, a, a bullhead. Yeah? It looks like Star Trek, man. Beat me up. Yeah, it's Star Trek. Freaking mirrors out on the hood. Yeah, the mirrors are useless. <laughs> yeah, they're, they all, they're like right in your A and B pillar. Or your A pillar. All, every time. That's funny. Yeah, funny. And F85. First year for the cut. I mean, the front end's kind of cool looking, but I agree with Ricky. It looks amphibious almost. Yep. And it's little. It's a That's a little car. I like it. That's a little. Was, yeah, this was the bike, uh, Falcon. It was faster. Hey, little car yeah. with a really big door. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> look at the size of the glass. Look how, look at this. Look how long how, that glass is. <laughs> feel, feel how good that door closes. Oh, yeah. Sweet. It's a freaking time capsule. It's sweet. Yep. It's a big like, like the, huh? Yeah. Said aluminum. Aluminium, baby. That's all the hood over. Can't work on it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn, that's crazy. Yep. I got this little pimple looking thing on top of the fuel pump going into the delivery. I, I still have not figured out what the hell it is. Look at this little bell thing. It don't go to nothing. Oh, yeah. It's part of the feed going into the carburetor. It ain't a filter or nothing inside of that? I ain't taking the part to figure it out, yeah, but it, it's it on probably the wrong make, side. Probably wouldn't go back together. Yeah. Yeah, but a whole 185 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> ultra high compression, baby. Yeah, ultra high compression. Gotta put the good gas in it, but can't go nowhere. Look at the bracing to the fender wells. Though. I know. That's kind of cool. What your model did you see with? The 62. Wow. You see the styling with all the chrome. That grill, yeah. that grill's wild. And it's mint. Mm -hmm. Damn. This is cool. Look at the size of the little bitty exhaust though. <laughs> <laughs> little manifold holes are tiny. 
<laughs> they open those up, they might have reached yeah. 200 horse. <laughs> Golly. Yeah, two more years and uh, the Buick sold that motor to uh, to to Land Rover, and that's the motor that's in the Land Rover. Oh, okay. <laughs> huh, very cool. Yep. Well, this is neat. Yeah, ain't it oddball as shit? We're gonna, put, good? we're gonna put, oh, well, like a dream. Hmm. I mean, the carburetor got a little bit off idle, but it purrs like a kid. You don't even hear it grooming. It's neat looking, dude. Yep. Hell yeah. Well, well, uh, this is before we molested it. We're gonna put air conditioning on it because you can't have this in uh, Texas without AC. Nah, I bet it is. I want to hear what 185 horsepower <laughs> sounds like. Uh, runs a lot smoother than what I was expecting. Yeah, runs pretty smooth. Sounds about like 185 horse. Yeah. Very good. Oh, whoa! What kind of transmission is this? It's a three and three. That's manual. Wow. See you, Tom. Did it die? Did it die? <laughs> Did it die? <laughs> Oh, oh, it just blows something in. <laughs> Whoa, look out. The okay. back of it does look neat. It totally needs to go off in the water now. Yeah. <laughs> well, did, uh, random days of Tom visits. Wow. I hope he makes it back where he came from that thing. It didn't sound too healthy. What's up? It's PBR. World Finals this weekend, and uh, we're kicking it off with a little Kid Rock here in a minute. Fixing to go in, see some bulls, see some riders, and best of all, see some Kid Rock. Let's go see what's up. Our world finals we're gonna see the PBR teams compete we're gonna see the champion bull rider and bull crown tomorrow right now it's just the second day we're hanging out with the PBR teams we're gonna go see some bulls meet some of the team owners and some of the riders I am stoked for this this is badass I got my feet in the dirt and I'm having a good time Daniel Keefe. Daniel Keefe. You're pretty far up on the ranks there, aren't you? Uh, I not think I saw him talking about you a minute ago. Not too far up, but I can do better. I can get a team, so. This is pretty crazy. I mean, I wouldn't get up on one of these things. Then again, I'm 55 years old. <laughs> I don't know. I see some of the cars you make. They got a little more power than these. <laughs> You're a different type of crazy. I get paid to drink beer and play with cars. I was supposed to get on a live bull. Uh, in 92, I won uh, some stupid contest in Northside for uh, mechanical. Yeah. And this guy dared me to buy, ride one the next day, and I was going to do it. And uh, stopped by the burger joint on my way home, you know, 2 in the fucking morning, whatever. And ended up getting carjacked, took a bullet, and uh, got shot. Holy so I guess I got out of riding the bull. 
He goes, well, that's a pretty good excuse if you really got shot. I said, yeah, I fucking I got shot. Yeah, see, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah I didn't wear good that, good. That, that's wild. Man, you have a good one. Be cool. Good luck. Well, I'm going to hang out. I tried to find a few. Dana White's Twisted Steel. 50,000 to Court McFadden. 50,000 to Cowboy Cerrone. Wow! Yeah! Alright guys, so we're here, the Triple A Route 66 Road Fest, dude, and there's already such badass cars here. I'm telling you, I can't wait for this, it's going to be a hell of a time, we're going to have some fun, but it's going to be super stressful and hard to be picking out the top car here. I mean, dude, just look at everything. <laughs> So we're day two here at the uh, AAA Route 66 uh, Road Fest. Uh, it's a little quiet, it's a little early in the morning. I got a Q&A to do, and uh, then we're gonna be down at the booth showing off some cars, and uh, they've asked me to pick uh, Best in Show. So uh, we're gonna take a little walk around, see what I like. Since the first day here, Richard has been talking about this red Mach 1, and I've kind of just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he finally walked over to it, and he's not lying. This is probably one of the nicest restored cars I've seen in a long time. And uh, it's also probably the longest I've ever seen Richard walk around a car and stare at it. I mean, we've been walking around this thing for a solid, honestly, five minutes. He's crawled all over it, so we'll see how it goes, but I really think he wants to buy this car. And, I'm not a Mustang fan, but damn, this thing's pretty. You gonna piss Daphne off? Is this a pissing off the D? I don't know. This was so nice. Daphne might be okay with it and just want to drive it. <laughs> Said he uh, bought it out of a junkyard in Arlington, Texas, and it had been picked clean and was rusty. And he just goes, I didn't think it was going to be this much, but I just kept going. And, uh, Did he want to sell it? Yeah, I don't know. I told him he wanted to, to give me a holler. Road Fest Best in Show Award. Very pleased to have Richard Rawlings and uh, the Gas Monkey Garage team with us this year to help put this special trophy together for our Best in Show uh, Award winner this year. And we are going to announce it now with the drum roll. We have Steve Perry, Haskell, Oklahoma. Got a hot rod out there, a 1934 day. Guys, so we're here with Steve. He won the Best in Show, and this is 
kid, beautiful car. Uh, we had to come catch up with him. I know everybody's trying to get out of here, but uh, man, we just want to tell you congratulations hey, from all of us, and uh, I hope you enjoy the trophy. Oh yeah, it's got a lot of meaning and oh, a lot yeah. of fun behind yeah. it. <laughs> It's a little heavy. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, this is a cool deal. This awesome, is a real bro. cool deal, man. Thank, Thank you so it. much. Nice work on your car, man. And uh, good luck next time, dude. See you, buddy. Appreciate it. So AAA Road Fest was a blast. We cannot wait to go back again next year. Uh, if you didn't go this year, make sure you come next year. But we know y'all been asking for content and we've been busy for like four or five weeks just non-stop on the road but hey i'm gonna tell you right now we got some really badass stuff coming a couple of builds a couple of adventures everything so uh follow me check it out the first thing we're gonna start off with is this wait don't show it though ricky what up are you having fun working on this oh yeah how many wheels does it got it's got two wheels two just two we're not building a car uh no not building a car huh Huh. Are we building this for something? Yes. Yes. It's always for something. Yeah. So one more surprise. Probably the biggest one of them all is with this build. We are building it to go along with something. Probably one of the biggest moves that Richard's made for Gas Monkey in a really long time. So you'll definitely be excited about this and the other part of it. But uh, let's swing over this way. Now, if you remember, Richard bought a 1979 four-wheel drive. Not the MF-79, but... We got this bad boy. I think it was like Oregon or something. He got it shipped up here. Really cool truck. And this may or may not be another part of that thing we was talking about earlier. Richard really needs a good driver for that thing. And uh, man, Chris and Kenny have been knocking this truck out. Uh, this is a full restoration. Um, no frame off, no build, but new motor, you know, suspension, wheels, tires, brakes, AC, everything works on this truck. Uh, no AC, right? No AC. no AC. I'm wrong on that one. <laughs> you, got, you got that wing window AC. Wing windows. But uh, man, it's also it's a really really cool build. Uh, this this will be dropping too here pretty soon. So man, there's a lot of stuff coming up, and be sure to check it out because it's big. All right, so check it out. You may be wondering why I'm dressed this way. I mean, check it out, like camo pants or something, and weird boots, and a little scarf apparatus. But the deal is, we're going to see a buddy of mine, Mike Sisk up in, uh, I don't know, up towards Wichita Falls. He's got a big ranch, and he has literally got rhinoceroses, rhinos, and a bunch of other animals that he uh, takes care of and what have you, but he's taking a partial to uh, saving rhinoceroses. I think right now he has like six or eight. He's got like seven or eight more coming from South Africa at the end of the year, and uh, he's doing good things, saving the rhinos from the poachers, and we're gonna go up there, have a few cold beers. I think he's got some corny dogs, and we're gonna go see some Ron Rosterses, sisters. I say right, you say no. Right, no. no. Right, no. no. Woo! What's up, buddy? Bro, how are you? Cool place yeah. out here, dude. <laughs> Very cool. Look at this. It's a little sanctuary out here, my friend. <laughs> so uh, this is a good buddy of mine, Mike. We've known each other, riding motorcycles, doing different businesses and stuff. We actually both. Uh, started our businesses at the same time, but he's lucky enough that he already sold his. <laughs> and uh, he's out here living the life saving rhino. So uh, we'll get some more information on that in a minute. But first, there's a corn dog bar and uh, a regular bar, right? And a bar. I'm and out of here. <laughs> Sable, a Gimsbug, Adax. A Gimsbug? What's, What's a, a Gimsbug? I think the African animal with a cool African face. That's what it is. It's an antelope. So like an antelope family. Yeah. Okay. Now, and you got zebras. If we were animals, we would be the wildebeest because they just fuck with everything. <laughs> Any of those? Yeah, jump. I got jump. six of those on here. Six jump wildebeest. Don't they? I, I would think that would be kind of like hyenas. No, we're telling you these wildebeest are they're like teenagers. They're so there's a new baby gimsbug that's just born, so they go check it oh. out, right? So the mom like she almost kills one of them because she's like, stop fucking with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you have any so problems right? like that? Yeah. So we go all the way to the top of the road. Right. Yeah. So that that road you came in, yeah. that's where I am. 
Where, where's that? Yeah, so it's up on top of that hill. You see this little windy road? Uh -huh. That that guy's house. That was Spike. That was that's Mr. Spike's house. He was born. There used to be a house right there where that barn is. Uh -huh. His house. He's he literally born in that house. So his, this was his, the old Spike's ranch. It's actually cooler in here. Oh no! The wind blows. 365. Really? <laughs> wow. That is really cool. But supposedly really? this is the highest point in Monte County. And you had to put in 400 acres of freaking high fence? Oh, you wait till you see all the high fence, pipe fence. Like, this has been an infrastructure. It's crazy. Like, it's like our own little version of Jurassic Park. Richard, be like, <laughs> why'd you even, why? Just like. Yeah, so I know you've been doing this for a long time and I, it's my first time out here, but what's the, what's the motivation? Well, so I've been to Africa several times and I've tried to help people there and it's very corrupt. So they have two things, mining and animal tourism. So I decided I was gonna take the most endangered animal, save them, and one day my grandkids will put them on an airplane and ship them back when they kill all theirs. Well, are you, are you intending to maybe breed? Absolutely, it's all we're here for. Really? Yeah, so Max has four girlfriends down here and uh, he's got pick of the litter. What's the, well, is, is there a rare like, rhino? Is it the uh, black no, rhino? Overnight. Yeah, so the, that's the, rare. The, the, so they're, they're all endangered. That one's more endangered than the white rhino. And you don't have any? Uh, no, well, they're, they wake, they were born pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> so how much do these things weigh? Uh, 4,500 pounds. And how do you ship it? Because it obviously it takes a while it has to eat, right? Yeah, so you put it in a container, you build a special container for it, you tranquilize it. If, let's say you're flying back from Johannesburg on Emirates Air, there's most likely an animal under you. A 4,500 pound rhino? Yep. Well, what if you're flying on Emirates Air and you got a 45 pound <laughs> rhino under here and it wakes up pissed off? Well, that would be a problem. That'd be a problem? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to well, get out of there where the plane's going like this? Well, he's, he's yeah. like, he's a little crate. He's, you know, yeah, he's can't, can't, can't move can't much. Move around. That's what's important about crate. But most likely, you know, there's probably when you fly those flights from Johannesburg, there's a high likelihood there's an animal under you. Well, we were flying home or somewhere the other day, I don't know, a couple months ago, and there was armored trucks out there, and they kept putting money onto the plane. And I was sitting there right out the window. I could see it. And, and I finally dawned on me what they were doing. They were put $180 million on that plane in cash, and they were in million-dollar bags. Okay? And the reason was... How are you gonna steal 180 bags, right, or whatever it was? <laughs> so that makes it real hard to steal, right. and uh, what have you. But it took forever because they were loading them one at a time, wow. and and counting them and barcoding like, them. And I would like to have that plane land here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, you know, DB Cooper, where are oh, you? One of those bags just fall out. <laughs> we need DB Cooper right now. I'd be jumping out with two bags. So how many animals do you have? Break it down. Rhinos. Well, well so I got rhinos, Gim's buck, wildebeest, uh, adax. And how many zebras? Of each, Mike, uh, so I got two zebras, five rhinos, or okay. thirteen wow. of the, the wildebeest the now. Wildebeest, yes. Okay, I got a stupid question about zebras because I, I love zebras. How come they never used them like horses? Because they're they, they you can't they won't can't carry, carry that much weight. Oh. But they're faster than a horse. The damn thing will run fifty miles an hour. Mm -hmm. But like, they can't carry weight. Well, that that like, consistently. Okay. Because you'll see a guy ride a zebra occasionally, but they can't carry that weight consistently. I got a crazy question. What's a zebra across between? <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. We'll ask Joe. So I got Zebras? a zoologist. We'll ask Is Joe. Half a horse and half uh, something else. Now in Texas, they're crossbreeding them with uh, donkeys, and they're called zonkeys. Zonkeys. I saw some uh, white cows down there. Are those yours? Not mine. No cows. Okay. All exotics. Is there we had cows and uh, bison here for a while. And when we got all this stuff, we got to get rid of all that. And what you do don't like have horses, so you corral them all with a 4x4 four four or something? Yeah. What do they feed on? Just whatever right. they there. Grass and hay. Drop it out there. How do you get the rhino to do what you want it to do? Because I don't think that they take instructions. Just. It's amazing how motivating food is. <laughs> <laughs> Just dropping apples along the way? Hey, we really, literally, we got some pellets and we feed them in the wintertime, but for the most part, for the most part, they like to be in the barn when it's cold. They like to be outside when it's warm. So are they just out there somewhere? Today we got them right here in the pen so we can be close to them. So if you'll look just over here, 
they're, they were bedded down earlier. I don't see them standing up, but they're just behind this barn. There's a 10 acre pen with a pond in it. And I know the, the sounds and cracks and everything I make trying to get up. <laughs> How's Rhino do yeah, it? He jumps up. The guy can run 30 miles an hour. Like, it, like I, there was a guy here earlier. Yeah, he, he goes, I'm going to get in. I goes, I just got to be faster than it. And I go, that thing would run your ass over and chunk you right out of there. Really? Zebras are in this pen. So it's really cool. Poached, right, for the horns. Yes. And, now, what and how much does a horn go for? Uh, about five thousand an ounce. Wow. So that's. So what's what? crazy is the guy that kills it. He gets a hundred bucks. Wow. And all that horn is is keratin. It's just like your fingernail on top. It's worthless. It's all an Asian bullshit thing. So a horn's worth like half a million bucks. And it's worthless, really. Worthless. It's just a thing. And that's what kills them once they take it off. Right? Well, no, you could cut the horn off and it'll grow back in two years. But what they do is they kill the animal to get the horn. If they would train the animal and just cut the horn off, it would be great. But they don't do that. What a shame. And it's the same thing going on with elephants. Yep, exactly. That's crazy. Well, man, this is a beautiful place. This is awesome. It really is. I'm yeah. going to have to know where you hide your keys so I, I can see, sneak you up here. Drop off the grid? I got bulldozers and tractors and track hoes. You can just go buy trees down and just fuck with shit. See, over by my house, we have trap hoes, <laughs> not track hoes. <laughs> right no, by Gas Monkey Garage. I think I've been on that show. Yeah, we got, we got a lot of money. This thing, like, I think you could drive it off the house and it would still land. It has so much travel. Yeah, this is badass. Have you seen the four-door turbo ones? Yes. So this is the two-door turbo. Golly. This thing is extreme. You know, this stuff, this one and the four-door, everything, all that's uh, legal up in Sturgis. Oh, yeah. We drive it on the street. Drive it to dinner. I had to put, Mickle made me put a five-horn harness in it because I barrel rode the last one I had. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> so what is it that you're doing up in uh, Sturgis? Yeah, so I've got or some. It's Leeds, right? I yeah, mean, so I'm in Leeds. We, you know, there's a great little burger joint there. So there's this neighborhood. I Airbnb some houses, and I love that neighborhood. So I bought like five lots in there. So I, I built myself a house. I was going to Airbnb it. It sold before I finished. So now I've got another one that's just built, and I just ordered furniture for it. Should be delivered on the first, and then like everybody has found South Dakota. Like, like it's like the new Dripping Springs Island. Well, it's a cheap Colorado. Yeah, like you, you get all the benefits of Colorado for half the price. A crowning Diet Coke, six bucks. Well, they're they're building a, a new golf course community up there. There, it's and the and the climate is changing. I don't believe in all the climate change bullshit, uh, but the world moves. Right. right. Um, so the weather's getting a little better, but um, but nobody thinks about South Dakota, right? It's like, well, fuck, why the hell would you make go to South Dakota until you go to South Dakota and you're like. Holy shit, this is beautiful up here. The people could not be kinder. It's the nicest group of people I've ever met. The governor there, she's got her shit together. So do you believe in the growth part of it? I mean, oh, do you think it's gonna grow and, and more vacation homes and uh, in-season homes and ski homes? The last house I sold, I sold for $450 a foot. It sold for more than the house I sold here. That's ridiculous. In, in South Dakota. So i've got a place i've been looking at up there because i go up there all the time you know me i gotta go up there for work every season i'm either up You're there with this guy. Guy. <laughs> yeah, i'm up there for some reason every every black hills rally and uh i found a bar for sale and uh i'm thinking about buying it i've been toying with the guy and talking to him for a couple of years he's kind of laid back really easy to deal with he's like hey if you want to buy it i'll sell it if is you it don't, downtown it is literally 100 feet from the corner of Junction and Main. Oh shit, so, that's where the big sign is. It's like the epicenter of Sturgis uh, Rally. That's pretty cool. And it's a pizza huh. place, and it's pizza. got two buildings. Uh, it's on about half an acre maybe, maybe a little less. Um, and it's one of those things I've just been toying with it because number one, I could sell Gas Monkey Sturgis shirts year round. I, I catch the tourism maybe six months out of the year now instead of only three or four. And then you got the bike rally for bike rallies, technically 10 days, it's but 10 it lasts days. about 20, That's exactly. 25. Well, you know what's crazy is, so my, I took the family up there. If you would keep the damn thing open year round, you would do business. Like, like everybody goes to season and did they close the restaurants? There's nowhere to eat. 
Well, it's not only that, but they have rallies in the winter with the snowmobiles right. and the side by sides and the four by fours. They have Camaro rallies, Mustang rallies. They have all kinds of different stuff that goes on, and the food there literally does suck. Yes. I mean, oh, no. it's, like, there's a diner it's there. It's bar food. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's bar food. You know, I, I don't want to talk bad about uh, anybody in particular up there, but it's just not quality good. Well, Nick and Tom, last time we went, we had to have dinner at the casino. It was the only damn thing open. Yeah. Mm. Well, the, that's up in Deadwood. Mm. Oh. You got to go to Deadwood. Deadwood's exactly. got a little bit more uh, right. food uh, choices, and Sturgis only has food choices during the season uh, and what have you. So, um, if you do something up there, man, I like to participate in that. Hmm. Now I'm in. I know you hate partners, but <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I had. I'm a, already up there, though. I had a big cable partner one time, and it was not very much fun. Well, I, like, but I'm already up there. That's what I'm saying. Um, that we'll could take work. some of this shit up there, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, you could drive that to dinner with your wife. Like, that's not cool with that. I know, but everybody is <laughs> so right getting this. like it is so cool there. Like they are, they want you to come and have fun, but they want you to be open year round. That's what I've been dealing with. Is which exactly I know I, from a buyer standpoint. I'm telling you, there's nothing to eat up there. So it, you know, if you could have, even if you had a good breakfast burrito and coffee, you're going to get. It got to be complicated, right? It like you say, it's a pizza joint, right? Fuck. If I just grab a pizza and take it home, that might, it's a win. Well, I've got a little better play on the pizza, but I'll I'll talk to you about that later. When are you going up there next? And and or I'm going to go up there next week. You want to roll with me? Yeah. Or I'll roll with you. You got the plane. I was going to say, fuck that. We'll just take the plane. Oh, this is working out really good for me. You got a plane and a house up there. Yeah. And I can just buy the bar, and you pay for half. This is a richer deal than making, buddy. <laughs> Let's go to the bar. All right, so uh, we're sitting on some bales of hay, which is very country-like, and uh, we're going down to see the rhinos. Uh, usually they get to roam free. Don't have Sometimes rent, he brings right? them in. Oh, He's even got some barns down there. He was telling me about that they have heated floors because uh, okay, it gets pretty cold here in the winter. But uh, we're going to go check them out, see what happens. Uh, maybe I get to feed one or something, or maybe it'll break loose and get out like in uh, that weird Jurassic movie. Park? Yeah, Jurassic movie. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Sometimes I look at them, and I'm like, I'm going to ride this motherfucker. Yeah, you're not right. <laughs> the day you decide to try, you make sure you call me. I got to be here. That's a big saddle. That's a big. I wouldn't have fucked with a saddle. I would have jump on it. What are you going to hold on to? You're, you ain't going to be on it long. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you call your ranch here? The Party Ranch? The Party Ranch. I love it. <laughs> you know, I had a little Boston Terrier when I was a kid, and he would terrorize the neighborhood when he got out and chase everybody's dogs and cats and chickens and whatever. And so we put him in one of the electric fences, and one day he's gone. He dug under the fence. <laughs> and I go over to the end where the, what was those batteries called back then? Rail back? Yeah, rail, rail, you rail. know, it's a big connection. <laughs> and he had gone over there and slapped that thing off. <laughs> that thing. And got it unconnected and dug out. I'm like, you little bastard. I had to chase him down. Our and uh, is undefeated. Yeah, you're not going to beat the ingenuity of uh, something that wants to get out of the fence. Like Except for my millennials, they stay in the office so I can tell them to. <laughs>
because I brought my cheese grater. I didn't know if it was going to yeah. work or not. No. But and if you see it doesn't work, it does not work. They really want well, the whole they, thing. They wallow in a lot of mud, right, to keep the so flies and stuff off. Or so that's 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 their what sunscreen. What these marks is yeah. is he rubbing it on the fence? Yeah. Oh yeah, he will rub it on anything. And, and what's the purpose? Just to he wants that that's his that's his defense mechanism. He so wants it as sharp as possible. It. Wants to so keep it sharp. Okay. Be careful, little one. I don't know. I don't know. He wants to get the horn for a step on. Can I touch the horn or does he get upset? He said, he said, no, you ain't touching my horn. That's what he said. Do you like people walking around touching your horn? Well, <laughs> kind of. At least take you to dinner first. Yeah. Wow, I'm touching a rhino horn. Oh, God. Just the sights wipe you. What they do is they don't come at you straight. They flick it. And like, so they can grab that truck and flick it and turn the truck over. But this, oh! <laughs> Am I to assume what that very large pile is over there? It's a dung pile. So what happens is if you're a male, you have a dung pile. So if you're another male and you cross my dung pile, it's on. Like that, like you chose to come inside my dung pile. It's like Richard using the female, the women's bathroom. Exactly, yeah. So it's on. But Next time he goes in the bathroom, they, they, don't yeah, like they will fight to the death. Like, really, they have two predators: humans and themselves. So I was cruising Harry Hines. <laughs> <laughs> this is really, really crazy. I mean, <laughs> how many people have rhinos in Texas? <laughs> Not many. <laughs> I guarantee you, these guys, they are very well taken care of, though. Like Joe and Kat, they do a great job. That's your people that take care of them. Yeah, so Catherine and Joe, they came down from Buffalo, and they are the rhino whispers. No, I get it, you know. I've heard about the girls up in Buffalo, so I, I get it. <laughs> Poor Max, like, like, he's always ostracized, right? It's like, the girl's like, get the fuck out of here. Max's like, come on, girl. <laughs> Oh, he'll wander over there when it's time. So Firefly, we think she's getting ready to ovulate, so like he'll be chasing her down tomorrow, which is why she's so edgy. So do you uh, set cameras up? and We have cameras, so, so none of these has ever produced a kid. So we actually have been trying to in, in, in vitro fertilization for these guys. But I just heard that the doctor that's helping us, her husband got ran over when he was walking his dog. It's like... What do you mean ran over? Like like physically ran over? She goes, yeah, like like physically ran over. I'm like, holy shit. That's so crazy. <laughs> What's crazy is that can run 30 miles an hour. So if one of them, what if all of them started like it was their time uh, at the same time? Would it be crazy? Would they fight? Oh, yeah, they fight. Well, this morning I was up on the deck and I heard them fighting for breakfast this morning. So I, I think they had gave some hay out and I could hear them like kind of fighting each other. That's crazy. So you got Max, Mother Nature he's got four chicks out here to choose yeah. from. And he's still a dud. Like, we... Max, you got one fucking job. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. I mean, that's the closest thing to a prehistoric animal in in all of the earth right now and uh, they're very endangered and what mike really has planned is absolutely amazing and uh I, i'm i don't know i'm kind of speechless I, i've seen a lot of stuff but i had never pet a rhino so hey guys, i can go do one with you richard raleigh it's nice to meet you Sydney. Sydney. nice to meet you it's brandon he's our uh brandon Hi. photographer extraordinaire and uh he documents a lot of this crazy stuff we do you ever uh, see that movie ad tv I don't think so. It's Richard's life. Like it was the original. Yeah. Like original, like just follow me around. Yeah. Whatever happens, <laughs> happens. Just make sure you got it on camera. And he had just started. Yeah. I just started. I'm like, it's a little harder than I thought it was. Yeah. And then he was like, one day he goes, one day I'm going to sell a million dollars worth of t shirts. But he's four hours surpassed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sell a lot of other stuff too. We got beer now and tequila and and sauces and you name it and it's a it's a good lifestyle brand but i wrapped it all around what i love which right. is cars and motorcycles and uh so uh you know they say do something you love and you won't work a day in your life and that's bullshit you work every <laughs> fucking day even doing what you love it's work <laughs> hey worse is retirement try that shit yeah I did it. you did it you retired for about four months that was the worst fucking job i had <laughs> all right so 
This right here, sorry about the sign. <laughs> um, it's uh, actually the granddaughter of Fletcher's. Okay. So, um, long story short, I'll try to make it short. Um, after Papa Skip died, you know, the family legacy was passed down to. The wicked stepmother tried to keep the fuck you made, yeah, but wouldn't let her use it. Pretty much. So, big old lawsuit <laughs> happened. Half a million dollar lawsuit happened, and they filed. Uh, the other name we had before this one was called Her Fletch. name is Fletcher, though. So, yeah. she can't use her own name. Yeah, her name was actually Fletcher. So, we were Fletch, and then um, <laughs> they got sued because of the infringement. So, we had to switch it to Corn Dog with no name. So, she let the public decide about it, and she was. Uh, the public decided he was either going to be the Corn Dog or do uh, Unicorn Queen or something. Everybody chose the Corn Dog with no name. So, but from the from the whole stuff, like the, the whole batter, we took out all the aluminum and preservatives, made it a healthier batter, went from clear frying oil to peanut oil. And, and Miss Vicky is awesome. The best. <laughs> the best. Really, she really is cool. Awesome. Yes, so is she going after the big business? You gonna try to oh, get into the so, fair? So we, we're, aren't you in the Rangers? Oh, uh, we're we're at Cowboy Stadium, FC Dallas, NASCAR, we're at Dos Equis Pavilion. We actually got Cody Jinx concert today. Um, we do mics, can't forget Mike. <laughs> and uh, but we do everything outside of the uh, outside of the fair. And they do a great job. Oh yeah, a oh, damn good job. Cool. Good I'm job. gonna have to have you guys oh, come yeah. out to uh, one of my uh, uh, car meets at Gas Monkey. We get a lot of people. We usually call it tacos and tires, but on that one we'll call it corn dogs and yes, tires. Sir. Yes sir, you call it whatever you want, man. Uh, I you, these guys are the best. Yes, I can't sir. call it whatever I want. What if I wanted to call it Fletcher's? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Fletcher's just call it without this, without this. <laughs> Corn dog box? Hell yeah. Do you want the rest of the jalapeno cheese? Jalapeno cheese, bro. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Mustard ketchup right on there. Oh, yeah. You oh. know, for me, what makes perfect corn dogs, you can always see if it's hand dipped or machine dipped when it's got a nice little nipple on it like that. <laughs> this little whoop. It, that's almost the same as the little, uh, when you go to Dairy Queen and get the soft serve, you got that little, little curly cue up there. Ain't no middle of the mall stuff right there, man. <laughs> That. Damn good corn dog, huh? Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, Got some jalapeno and cheese in there. That's what I need. There you go, boss man. Can't be walking around with a mustard mustache. <laughs> My guy's looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. Uh, we'll go to Sturgis, we'll jump on your bird, we'll fly up there. Oh, yeah. I, I want to bring Daphne, but I don't want her to know what the hell I'm trying to do because she'll poo poo on it. <laughs> no, yeah. she'll get all pissy and everything else. But I think you'll like this place. Yeah, I'm in. Thank you, brother. Right, Thanks for seeing the rhinos, man. Get you some of that.